real opportunity in the next four years, and hopefully eight years, to uh, promote a disarmament agenda uh, in ways that will make the world more secure. But disarmament is not a goal in and of itself. Um, I mean, nuclear weapons are uh, a grave threat, but um, they have to be abolished in a way that, that does not make the world uh, less secure. Um, so I think that a uh, focus on security is something that, that my institute uh, and uh, others can, can bring to this, uh, this question. Uh, we are not uh, so much uh, uh, you know, street advocates for nuclear disarmament, but trying to bring a focused uh, attention uh, on the issue. And uh, to, so to promote uh, disarmament in ways that to make the world more secure and in ways that tie in with the non-proliferation agenda. These uh, uh, twin um, goals of non-proliferation and disarmament are two of the pillars of the NPT, the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. And um, too often uh, in the last uh, eight years, these um, goals have been disaggregated. The, um, the Bush administration has been focused exclusively on non-proliferation um, some other parts uh, of the world, some other countries have been focused exclusively on disarmament and both uh, in their own way have uh, denied the connection uh, between the two goals. Um, there is a, a connection. It's, um, it's uh, a connection particularly in the steps that are taken uh, toward both goals. They're, they're, they're congruent uh, uh, steps. Uh, for example, um, in achieving a nuclear weapons free world, um, there will be there will have to be very intrusive uh, inspection uh, procedures uh, to uh, provide assurance to everyone that uh, a country is not uh, hidden away a certain number of nuclear weapons or fissile material or the means to produce uh, more uh, nuclear weapons. So strict verification will be necessary. Now, um, strict verification is also important for non-proliferation the kind of verification measures that the IAEA um, has um, uh, said should be um, a part of every uh, country's obligations, uh, non-proliferation obligations, that is the safeguards additional protocol providing uh, greater access um, uh, and rights for the inspectors. Now, some countries don't want to accept uh, the additional protocol because they see it as a, a unilateral imposition of an obligation um, on them without the um, nuclear weapon states uh, taking on any uh, obligations on their part, um, not promoting, uh, not taking uh, steps toward disarmament. So m my point is that um, if, if all the countries could, could understand that strict verification will be necessary to getting to zero and that the nuclear weapon states are taking steps to get to zero, well this makes uh, it more compelling um, for the non-nuclear weapon states to take on these additional uh, verification uh, requirements because it will be requirements that will be imposed on the nuclear weapon states as well. Uh, a second example is enforcement. Um, if countries are going to give up nuclear weapons, they, uh, there will have to be some kind of, a, of an enforcement uh, mechanism uh, by the United Nations. Uh, Security Council uh, is probably the best uh, uh, bet. Uh, today, enforcement has not been uh, so rigorously practiced. When countries have broken their obligations, um, there hasn't been much in the way of enforcement. North Korea uh, breaks its NPT obligations, flagrantly uh, expels inspectors, and uh, withdraws from the NPT, and uh, doesn't really pay a, a price for it. So um, enforcing um, the non-proliferation obligations will create a, uh, a sense of confidence that enforcement uh, measures uh, can work in the future uh, when countries uh, draw down their arsenals and won't be put at a security risk. Um, there, are, there are various other ways that um, the, the connections between non-proliferation and uh, disarmament I think can be strengthened and I think if we are going to uh, take steps toward uh, disarmament um, that will um, persuade the the American body politic, including those on the Republican side who are mostly concerned about non-proliferation. And, and let's face it, I mean, most Americans are mostly concerned about non-proliferation. Uh, steps that can be uh, toward disarmament that can be also applicable to non-proliferation, I think, are a are win-win 
uh, situation politically and uh, in terms of the goals uh, to which we uh, aspire. Now, meanwhile, um, we have to take other steps uh, uh, to reducing arsenals on the way to zero. And um, it's going to be difficult to persuade Russia to, um, to place less uh, emphasis on uh, its nuclear uh, weapons. Today it's placing uh, more emphasis on them. Um, China will have to be brought into the equation. And it will be important uh, not to uh, reduce American and uh, Russian arsenals in a way that, that makes China feel like suddenly um, they could build up and, uh, and reach equivalency. Uh, there has to be an effort to persuade all of the nuclear weapon states to, to build down. Now, uh, you know, it's fair to say that China, Britain, France um, maybe don't feel as much of a, of a need to build down when the Rus Russian and American arsenals are still so big. But as they drop down, and I think they will both drop down to a thousand um, under the, the Obama years, and maybe less, maybe 500 on each side. Well, now they're in the same uh, league as the rest of the states, and I think they all have to be uh, uh, joining in a, an effort uh, to collectively reduce their arsenals. Uh, the British uh, government has been promoting um, uh, a, uh, a, a policy of, uh, of bringing the, the five nuclear, uh, acknowledged nuclear weapon states together uh, to look at uh, ways that they can uh, collectively uh, uh, join in disarmament measures, and I think um, it will be uh, useful to uh, for the United States to uh, to work with uh, Britain in this regard. It's an area that Britain is showing uh, admirable leadership, and uh, you know, as the United States is, is engaging bilaterally, uh, uh, working on a multilateral uh, uh, reduction steps will also be important. I, I think that now is a good time. The rest of the world has such high expectations and hopes for the Obama administration. Um, Let's uh, let's work uh, let's work off of these expectations and hopes, and uh, and show that uh, the Obama um, administration means what it said when it will um, make the goal of, uh, of zero nuclear weapons a uh, an organizing principle for its foreign policy. Um, it'll be helpful to get some some useful um, uh, first steps, uh, you know, to show some progress right off the bat because some other things will take longer. The Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty ratification will be difficult. Getting 67 senators in the United States to uh, support ratification uh, won't be uh, done overnight. And so I hope that the world doesn't have uh, too high of expectations that, that all the steps will be taken right away. But I think um, you know, working uh, uh, toward them can, can create a, a useful um, initial series of, of, uh, of victories. In the, in the fight, and those can be then promoted at the 2010 uh, NPT Review Conference. Um, and hopefully that review conference, uh, in addition to uh, cementing in steps uh, toward disarmament, can also uh, cement in some additional non-proliferation measures. I think we have a, a real opportunity in the next four years to move ahead, and uh, I think, um, I think we're, we're at a, a very good uh, tipping point in a, in a positive direction.